This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Lieutenant General Lewis Burwell Chesty Puller requires no introduction to an audience of Marines. Veterans and partisans of the Army, Navy, and Air Force might debate over the preeminent leader in their respective services, but there is absolutely no doubt that Puller is the hero of the U.S. Marine Corps, the very icon of the institution. His larger-than-life image is etched indelibly in every Marine almost from the first day at boot camp or officer candidate school. His stern, leathery, square-jawed visage stares down from every wall in every building throughout the Corps. Countless times every day his name is invoked like a magical incantation by officers and non-commissioned officers, NCOs, in every conceivable setting and for every purpose under the sun. His pithy words, daring deeds, and colorful mannerisms are ingrained in the culture of the organization. Although Puller is often cited as the most decorated man in the history of the Corps, a debatable assertion depending on how one ranks the worth of various awards, his valor was only a small component of his legendary status. What most endeared him to his fellow Marines was his style of leadership. Like other charismatic commanders, he was able to inspire and influence others on an emotional and often individual level. Whereas some leaders might seem to naturally possess the gift of a magnetic personality, Puller's ability was rooted in actions and attitudes largely developed by years of education and effort. His approach to the challenge of command, from a small squad to a division, consisted of looking out for the welfare of his subordinates, giving his utmost, leading from the front, and maintaining a genuine connection with those in his charge. These constituted the essential elements of Puller's charismatic leadership. There is nothing particularly mysterious or magical in this formula, and Chesty certainly was not the first military leader to follow it. Many throughout history have understood and implemented at least parts of it. Baron Friedrich von Steuben, for instance, is said to have counseled in his Revolutionary War drill book that a commander should gain the love of his men by treating them with every possible kindness and humanity. But Puller was one of those rare individuals who was able to put it all into practice, to include the often difficult aspect of preserving a close relationship with his most junior subordinates even as he rose ever higher in rank. In the Corps he came to be most closely associated with charismatic leadership, and thus he remains the best known and most revered of all Marines. The example he set has endured as a paramount touchstone in an institution that prizes leadership above all other qualities. Lewis Burwell Puller was born in the small town of West Point, Virginia, on 26 June 1898. He was the third of four children in a family of modest but comfortable means. Whereas his mother hailed from a distinguished heritage reaching back to the earliest settlers in the state, his paternal forefathers had left no mark until the middle of the 19th century. His father's father was a blacksmith, farmer, and budding entrepreneur who achieved a small measure of success as a Confederate cavalry major in the Civil War. He died in battle at the age of 30. Lewis was only 10 years old when he lost his father, a moderately successful salesman, to cancer. The difficult times that followed and the example set by his mother in dealing with them had a major impact on Lewis's emerging personality. He thought of his mother as a strong woman and tried to emulate her, developing his own deep determination and strength of character. He recalled how she maintained discipline in the family without physical punishment. She treated me like a man and gave me to know she expected me to act like a man. With the constant reminder that he was the elder male in the household, in addition to working part-time to help make ends meet, he acquired a keen sense of responsibility at a young age. The predominance of females in his life, his grandmother, mother, and two older sisters, probably accounted for his enduring affection for family and close friends, often expressed in a tender, warm-hearted manner. As a boy, Lewis enjoyed the adventure of the outdoors and the rough-and-tumble of small-town sports. He was not a gifted athlete, and at 5 feet 8 inches and 144 pounds when full-grown, was not physically imposing. His barrel chest, serious square-blocked face, and outthrust jaw were his most impressive visible features. His voice and manner of speech were also distinctive. He spoke slowly, with a touch of a southern accent, underpinning his own unique and sometimes butchered pronunciations with a deep-throated, gravelly intonation. He was not usually loud, but when the situation warranted it, he could bark like a howitzer or shout commands with all the vigor and carrying power of an angry bull. He developed one other trait that helped create his bulldog-like demeanor. In public or in private, he was neither quiet nor verbose, but had a simple, straightforward, pretty blunt style in dealing with others. 
Everyone soon discovered that you didn't have to guess what Louis was thinking. He told you, and he did it so simply you could understand. This quality would serve him well in establishing a close connection with his men.